Okay, I'm going to start an analysis on the Sorcerer now. I already did the Necro and the Trickster, and I was going to do the Archer, but then my Archer died to a pre-nerfed Belladonna of Garden, except an Immaculate Red Flower, which actually, many people think that was a, a typo, because the I Immaculate versus E Immaculate, but it actually isn't, because Immaculate, E Immaculate, like that, is actually the antonym and opposite of immaculate, so I'm not actually that upset that I was killed by an immaculate red flower. A, I am upset that there was a stealthy one in the back, but I guess it's a clever way to try to weed out some of the pro players and let them rebuild, which was actually kind of fun. So, because of that, I'm doing the sorcerer instead. Uh, so the first thing you know about the sorcerer, because we're just going to dive right into it, is that it's a wand class, and it's the highest damage wand class in the game, which really sounds impressive, but you need to realize that the classic beat out was the priest, so it's not really that impressive. So that's what it is. It doesn't have much damage per second. So in an, a steamrolled event, or in a very full dungeon, like a full abyss or a full bad lab even, it's not necessarily all that likely to get loot. That's fine, you just need to realize that you need to sort of go solo. You need to be a, a lone ranger in many ways, okay? So, staying away from people, walking away from anyone you see, can, can be really helpful to you. Okay, so first, before we get into, you know, its ability, let's talk about wands a bit. Cause I haven't done an analysis of wands, and wands are actually a really neat weapon, despite their low DPS, because the UT wands are actually really interesting, in that, uh, unlike other wands, they all sort of give you stats, except for the C wand, which is doesn't, so I'll get to that in a second. So first, let's talk about the, the tiered ones, because they're simple. They're basically like nerfed staffs, they're like weaker versions of staff weapons, which is, it means they don't have much power, but they're still useful. The tricky thing is they have a long way to go and they're not particularly fast, so when new players start using wands, they're often going to miss a lot, or they'll just do this, they'll sort of shoot off in every direction, and it, it is possible, though, to use every shot, in which case the damage per second isn't that much worse than like a necro or even a wizard, as long as you can land all of them and you have high stats, you can still get soulbound which is something I'll talk about in another video, because it's something that most players do not understand how Soulbound works, so I'm going to get to that in a different video. Anyways, so you know that it has lead time, because it's slow and goes long distance, so you need to account for that, and all the wands have that, with the exception of maybe, I find the crystal wands a little bit easier to aim, because it's pretty fast, but most wands still you need to lead a fair bit, you need to learn how to use them. It's not that hard, it just takes a bit of practice, just like everything else in this game does, and everything else in the world does. So you got to get used to that fact. So now, let's talk about the tiered ones. I'm going to start with the Conducting, which is one I'm, I use most of the time, because it's got the highest raw DPS, okay? The issue with it is its bullets are so slow. And it doesn't have that much range. It's got the same amount of range as the tiered one. Because it's so slow when you're running with it, look how, look, that's, like, that's like sword range when you're running forward with the conducting. It's basically sword range. Whereas if you run forward with, say, a crystal wand, which actually has less raw range, it's like almost as far, if not farther, even though it has less raw range, which is sort of interesting. And St. Abraham's, which has extra range and extra speed, it's like you may as well be using a dagger. Look at that extra range coming out of that when you're running towards it. So it's just sort of a very slow weapon. It has high damage per second, and interestingly enough, it has plus one defense and plus one wisdom, which is really helpful. The extra defense makes you a little bit tankier than most wo uh, robe classes, and the wisdom makes you get more scepter uses, and it goes really nicely with the full set, which is usually all I really wear. Um, aside from C1, if I have it, I only have one right now, and it's usually on my priest. It's temporarily on this character. Anyways, moving on to the Saint Abraham's, which is a, a, a very underused wand in my opinion. I find it's actually a really nice wand. It goes with the priest set. It doesn't do nearly as much damage as even the C wand. It's pretty low damage, but it has the longest range by 0.4 tiles, which isn't much. It has really fast bullets though, and look at those stats. Plus 4 vit, plus 4 whiz. So I use it as sort of A, a recovery staff, or, and B, a staff and use as well, need range, and will be recovering a lot. So I actually use it against the rock dragons a lot. Because against the Rock Dragons, I'll, I'll be wanting to spam my Scepter, I'll be wanting to recover health quickly, and I'm going to want all my range. It's good for that kind of thing. It's also good for fighting the Avatar. Things like that, where you want the extra regeneration and the extra range, and it's not a big hit in damage. It's a minor hit in damage. So that's what I use it for. Uh, but it's not like a, a critical staff. I don't necessarily carry one around, because sometimes it's just not worth the slot. So now we're going to get on to the uh, Crystal Staff, which is... The crystal wand, I mean, which is, in my opinion, the rarest, and it's a tough one to get, 
but it's really useful in some situations. Now, it pierces and does, like, medium damage, like, between the state of hands and the conducting. It has much less range, 8.4 instead of 10.410, right? So it's not of as much range, but as you can see, like, 8.4 range, it's still plenty of range. Plenty of range. You barely notice the, the hit in range. So what is it for? It's for a, a few uses. Um, the first one it's good at is walls of gods, obviously. Right? They can, they can go full archer and take down a wall of gods in sort of one blast. It's also good at any situation where you have lined up enemies, right? Because that's what piercing is good for. It can get, if you have even just two enemies get hit by each bullet, then all of a sudden its DPS goes out past that of the conducting, right? So that's where that can be useful. And when it comes to other uses, uh, it's good at events as well, because a lot of events, and events and bosses in particular, often have a lot of minions surrounding them. And to get through to those minions, you often would love a piercing shot. So, like, at Abysses, when you first go in, he's got those little red stars that'll steal all of your damage for, like, a solid minute if you don't use a piercing wand, which is why this is very helpful in those situations. Uh, aside from that, I actually like the conducting more if I'm going to be doing one-on-one -on -one battles without much in the way. So, that's, that's the wand. And now, I guess, let's move on to the ability. So, first of all, you'll notice I don't have a T6... Scepter, I rarely do. I have a T5 right now just to show you, because T5 is identical to T6, except T6 gives you plus 2 vit, plus 2 whiz. Okay, so now, let's just set up by talking about the um, tiered and all scepters that have the same property of, if you shoot him, you can see it's like a 90 degree angle, sort of like whoosh to whoosh, a little 90 degree angle centered on my cursor, and it's got hefty range. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to find an enemy in that range and blast them with the scepter and do whatever damage the scepter asks for. So in the case of the T6 or T5, that's 200 damage. Then, if it still has a target to go, so this one can hit 8 targets, this one can hit 7, it will jump to a target as long as it's within that same age. It'll basically go to the target and circle around trying to find another target, sort of like lightning does, right? And that actually will let it... It, it, it chooses randomly, but that'll let it hit a bunch of targets at once, like you can see here. And that makes it rather useful for that purpose. And it's really good against a lot of walls, because most walls only have six, seven enemies in them, despite how scary they may look. And it's just it's good in a lot of situations. It can also shoot things from much farther away than any other class. Cause like, even though I just hit this guy over here, I also ended up hitting the guy all the way over there as well. So that's sort of uh, how that works. And now let's get on to how they tier up. So tiered weapons, the higher tiers get more damage and more targets and more mana usage. Now, the untiered is just better. I'm not even going to lie. Most of the time, like, there's a, at least some use for the tiered, and I've heard that maybe there is. I don't believe it. I think it lies in deceit, because the untiered is just better. Let's start off with first damage. Most people look at it and they go, yeah, but, uh, I mean, it has all the special stuff, but only 180 to 7 targets, whereas this one does 200 to 8 targets? Well, first of all, 7 or 8 targets, barely a difference. Barely a noticeable difference whatsoever. And it costs less mana, 65 to 85. That difference makes up for the difference in damage. That is actually more damage per mana. 180 over 65 versus 200 over whatever, right? So I just pull up calc right now. Here, I'll pull in the MS calc right here. So we've got the uh, 180 divided by 65 gives you 2.77. And for the tiered one, it's 200 divided by 85. 200 divided by 85, 2.35. Right there. The numbers do not lie. Thank you, MS Calc. So that's simple right there. And then it's even got more, on top of doing a bit more damage, I mean, if you include the eighth target, the set to the side bolts is about equal. But, like, seven targets is plenty, okay? And on top of that, it's so spammable, because MP cost is, like, the same as, I think, like, T0. It's, like, a, it costs nothing. I can, like, watch the spam. I can get 11 spams off before I run out of mana because of my pet and my 8-8-ness. So it's, it's not like it's an issue spamming it, and it's a lovely weapon. And on top of that, it gives slowing to the enemies, which, like, I mean, it's only for three seconds, but it makes it easier to hit with the one, which we already covered, is a hard weapon to aim because enemies often are running along. If you can slow them, they become much easier to shoot. And finally, the Quinter, the T6, has Vit Wiz. The Fulmination has Attack Wiz. It swaps that attack for Vitality, which is something that wand classes need attack more than they need Vitality, and it's just so nice to have that extra attack. And who cares about Fame Bonus, really? If you're going for Fame Bonus, you're going to be dying anyways. It doesn't really matter. So there's that. And it also, of course, just like the Conducting, goes well with the full set, which looks really sexy. Just saying. Okay, so now that we've covered sort of how this 
sorcerer does its thing, let's cover what it's good at. So just like every class with this kind of massive range, it is really good at godlands farming. Because it can stay far away from enemies and build up walls and take them down and do anything it needs to do. It, it doesn't need a nexus often. And it just, it, it, it survives in godlands. Maybe not as fast as the staff classes because of the hit and damage, but then again, its advantage over them, especially with the good wands, is... Wow, we did just see that guy hack. Mob attacked. Wow, caught on video. Anyways, the good thing about the added damage... I'm sorry, not the added damage, the lack of damage. The good thing about the scepter is it also makes dungeons a fair bit easier compared to most staff class abilities because it chains. It can shoot around corners and tell you if there's enemies there. So I find that it's much easier to do, say, abysses on a sorcerer than on even a wizard. So it's good at the Godlands dungeons, or it's actually decent at all dungeons, and it's real, I find it's real best use. This is my go-to class for public FFA tombs. Because all you need to do is stand on the edge, and in many ways it's better than a plague. You just sit on the edge and just spam your scepter constantly, doing all the damage to the enemies, chaining them together, and you, like just a few, like just one mana worth of scepter spam hits all three with 180 damage each time, that's 1,800 damage, and it regens so quickly, and on top of that, the assassin with his plague can't get in close enough with his range. I can just sit on the edge like this, and my bullets, most of them will hit at least one of the bosses, because they keep going. And in fact, that's the situation where sometimes the St. Abraham's Wand is good again, because it'll get you a few more uses of your scepter, and the extra range means that you can basically stand on one edge and hit all the way across the center and hit all the bosses, which is really special, <laughs> shall we say. Um, later on, it is sort of sometimes useful to go see wand in there because the artifacts guard them, but any of the wands will do fine combined with the scepter equals 3-3 three, three, public tomb GG. So, yeah, that's the, the sorcerer. Thanks for watching.